Welcome to the Anxiety Attic where I make self-help videos for anxiety disorders and phobias. This video is about blood and needle phobia, but I assure you no blood or needles will be shown. If I have to represent blood, I will block it out so that it doesn't cause any distress. When I was 13 years old, during a school woodwork class, a girl cut her finger. She was not at all upset and proudly waved her finger around to show everyone the blood. The next thing I knew, another girl was lying on the floor. She had fainted. I didn't know it, but what I had witnessed was a phenomena called vasovagal syncope. So what is vasovagal syncope and why should the sight of blood invoke it? Vasovagal syncope is one of three types of fainting. Just in case you're interested, the other two are sinus carotid syncope and situational syncope. But I won't cover them as they're not relevant to blood phobia. In vasovagal syncope, the heart slows and blood pressure drops, resulting in reduced blood flow to the brain. As a result, the body drops to the floor. With the body horizontal, blood flow to the brain increases, and the person who has fainted soon comes around. Although there can be other causes of vasovagal syncope, an extreme emotional response, such as that seen in blood phobia, is a very common trigger. The really curious thing is that other phobias and even panic attacks very rarely cause this dramatic reaction. But in blood phobia and also needle phobia, it is actually quite common. The reason it's rare in other phobias and in panic attacks is that fear causes the blood pressure to increase. So there is plenty of blood going to the brain. This is the classic fight or flight response that I talk about in so many of my anxiety videos. But even with vasovagal syncope, the blood pressure initially increases, but then it suddenly drops and the heart rate slows. But why does an emotional response cause this sudden drop in blood pressure and heart rate? Why does it do it much more in blood phobia than other phobias or panic attacks? The likely answer is evolution. A drop in heart rate and blood pressure, when in danger, is not unique to humans. It is seen in all vertebrates, including animals, birds and fish. When there's no chance of running or fighting off a predator, many animals will freeze. This is known as tonic immobility, and during this state, the heart slows down. In fact, the willow grouse can slow its heart rate from 120 beats a minute to 30 beats a minute. The chances of survival are improved because the animal is not moving, and most predators have evolved to catch moving prey. Also, the slow heart rate and breathing makes the animal look dead, and some predators lose interest in dead prey. Note how your cat gets very bored once a mouse is dead. The other thing seen in animals is a drop in blood pressure as a response to hemorrhagic shock. When an animal is injured, the blood pressure drops, making it easier for the blood to clot. If the blood pressure were to remain high, it would soon bleed out. So why don't we see animals faint when they're scared? Well, this is due to two things. One, human brains require a lot more blood to be pumped from the heart. Two, humans stand upright, so the heart requires more effort to pump blood all the way up to the brain, whereas most animals are on all fours and the brain is usually nearer the ground. So it makes sense that some humans have developed the ability to slow their heart and drop their blood pressure in times of perceived danger. But why should someone else's blood, or just the sight of a needle, invoke such a dramatic response? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. I found this fascinating study. In this study, they took a group of people who had blood phobia and a group of people who didn't, and put them on a tilt table. What they found is that 82% of the people with the blood phobia displayed fainting or pre-fainting symptoms, but only 9% of the other group did. The study concluded, people with syncope related to blood or injury phobia have an underlying autonomic dysregulation predisposing them to neurally mediated syncope, even in the absence of any blood or injury stimulus. Or put simply, these people have a vulnerability to fainting or near fainting, even without the sight of blood or needles. So why are blood and needles a trigger for people with these phobias? The answer goes something like this. Many people find the sight of blood, or the thought of having a needle stuck in them, nauseating. But for people prone to vasovagal syncope, 
they will feel a lot worse. And the feeling leads to avoidance. And if you've watched my videos explaining how phobias work, you will know that avoidance increases fear. This drives the cycle of increasing fear and increasing avoidance. And when the trigger can't be avoided, there is a massive emotional response. Their body initially goes into fight or flight with an increase of blood pressure and heart rate. And then the vasovagal response kicks in and they faint. Put simply, it is the fear of fainting, because they are more prone to it, that has caused the fear of blood or needle, rather than the other way around. However, it is often the blood or needle that is seen as the root cause, because of the strong association with fainting. This propensity to emotionally triggered fainting is not a medical condition, it's just a genetic variation. So what can you do if the sight of blood or needle makes you faint? Well, the only thing you can do is to try to reduce the fear response that pushes you over your fainting threshold. Avoiding your triggers increases the fear, but gradual controlled exposure to your fear will over time diminish the fear until it is below the threshold to trigger fainting. This graded exposure is used in therapies like hypnotherapy and cognitive behavioural therapy. Some people are able to overcome their phobias in just a few sessions where others may take much longer, and some very severe cases may not be able to complete the desensitization process. If you would like to understand more about how phobias develop, then watch this video here. If you would like to learn about needle phobia specifically, then watch this video here.